اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In this session we are going to talk about correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient describes the direction and strength of linear relationship. Now previously we have visualized between two quantitative variables using scatter plots. We have also described the overall pattern of the relationship by considering its direction, form and strength. We noted that it is difficult to assess the strength of relationship just by looking at the scatter plot. Now in this section we develop a numerical measure to assess the strength of this relationship or the relationship between two variables. We only focus on relationships that have linear form. Now linear forms are quite common and relatively simple to detect. More important, we have a numerical measure that can assess the strength of the linear relationship. Now the measure of strength we are about to study can be used only for linear relationships. And that measure of strength is R, that is the correlation coefficient. And this is a numeric expression that can measure the strength and direction of linear relationship between two quantitative variables. By direction, we mean that this correlation coefficient will have a sign with it. Now, if it has a negative sign, then the direction is opposite. That is, increase in one variable leads to a decrease in the other. Now, the negative sign would mean that there is an inverse relationship between the two quantitative variables. Now, how do we interpret that correlation coefficient of R? Now, there are no strict guidelines for interpreting the strength of correlation coefficient, that is R. However, some researchers have proposed the following guidelines. So, what is the first guideline? A correlation coefficient of 0.1 or less is considered very weak. A correlation coefficient of 0.1 to 0.3 is considered weak. Now the correlation coefficient ranges between 0 to 1. And on either sides, that is if it's closer to 0, it is weak and the closer it is to 1, it is strong. Now it can be negative and it can be positive. A correlation coefficient of 0.3 to 0.5 is considered moderate. Now it could be plus 3, that is a positive moderate or positively moderating relationship. Now it could be minus 0.3 or minus 0.5 or it could be plus 0.3 or plus 0.5. Now minus here would mean there is an inverse relationship between the two variables. Plus obviously means a positive relationship. Correlation coefficient between 0.5 to 0.7 is considered strong. And finally, anything over 0.7 is considered very strong. Now, obviously, a correlation coefficient over 0.85 would mean there are issues of multicollinearity. That means that both these constructs whose relationship is being assessed are actually measuring the same thing. They are more or less identical. Now it is important to note that these are just guidelines and the interpretation of strength of a correlation coefficient may vary depending on specific context and research question. Now obviously these are general guidelines and different scholars, statistics experts or statisticians have recommended different guidelines. Now you may refer to different obviously text that is available maybe on books.google.com or in your own library to see what other viewpoints are there. Now, how do we interpret it? Let's look at an example. Correlation coefficient interpretation. Now, this is the correlation between two variables, but how do we get it in R? So let's see how do we get correlation coefficient in R. Now, this is the code that I have written. Again, the first thing you have to read the data file. So once you read that data file, it has to be stored in an object. Now, this is your data frame. Now again, double check whether you have loaded it correctly. So let's first run it. Now it seems there is no error and then run it. There is vision and there is OP. So now 
Default correlation is PSL. Now, how do we get the correlation? You have to call in the correlation function. And I want the correlation between vision and OP. Now, vision is in this data frame, that is data S. Where is this data frame? This data frame is holding this data set here. Again, separated by dollar sign and it will give you the different variables in your study. For example, let's let me do it. Data S, dollar and then vision. Here is the composite score for vision. Obviously, vision was defined by four items. So you can create a composite score by just taking the average of those four items. Data S, again dollar sign and OP. OP was defined by five items. You can look it here, OP 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I took the average of OP. How did I do it? Well, I did it in the last session as well. Let me quickly show you again, just to repeat. Now you simply need to go at the end here. Let me do it for the other variable. Let's say I want to do it for development. So let me create some space here. Now DEV is equal to average. Now where is development? So development has got five items or seven items if I'm not wrong. Here it is. So development one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Select them, press enter. Now here is the composite score for development for respondent number one. I want to obviously generate it for all the respondents. Just come or select the cell and bring your cursor to the bottom right. Double click and now it generates the composite scores for all respondents. Now save it. And similarly, you can do it for all your constructs as well. Now again, you have to recall the data because obviously the updated file should be selected. Close it. And let's see if we got it or not. Now, yes, development is here now. Now, how do you find the correlation? Correlation between data and then the variable vision, data, and then the OP, run it. And here is the correlation 0.6192. Now, the default is obviously Pearson, you can change it to Spearman as well. If you've got ordinal variables, you can use Spearman. Again, correlation, data, vision, data, OP, the method is Spearman, run it. And here is your correlation between vision and OP using Spearman correlation. Now you can do a matrix as well. So how do you do a matrix? Now, first you will have to create a vector or an array of items that you want to correlate. So you will use the letter C parenthesis open and then the variable names that you want to correlate. In this case, I want to correlate the items for perceived organizational support with organizational performance. So each item in inverted commas separated by a comma and then you add this vector or put it in this object of variables. And then in the data, you select these variables and put it into another data frame. So from the data set that you've got, and that is up here as well, you select these variables, which variables, these variables, and you put it into another frame that is DAT. I've named it named it DAT, you can name it whatever you want. And now you want the correlation matrix. So the correlation matrix is the correlation of correlation of these items. Now these DAT represents these items extracted from this data set. And the method is PSN. So what happens is you are extracting a subset from this data set. And that subset is of these items here. And you hold it when you run the correlation, you hold that in this correlation matrix here. So let me run it one by one. First of all, create the vector. Done. Now, once the vector is created, extract that particular vector from this data set and put it into a new data frame. Done. Now take the correlation and put it into a correlation matrix object. You can name it any object whatsoever and now run the correlation matrix or see the summary of correlation matrix. Now this is the summary of correlation matrix. 
Now that you've got your correlation matrix, what you can do is you can put this correlation matrix into an Excel file as well. Now, to do so, you need open Excel SX library. Now, if it's not installed, please install it using install.packages function just like this here. So instead of HMISC, you write open Excel SX like this here. You can open, you can even install it from here. Tools, install packages. And just write open XL s x and then simply click click it and install it and once you install it just call this function and once you call it now obviously this just like it was built under 4.1.3 don't need to worry about it and now put this correlation matrix here that you got into your excel file so just run it and now where is this correlation matrix here it is. A file will be created in the folder and here is the correlation matrix. Again, what you need to do is you can simply remove these values above the diagonal. So normally when the correlation matrix is reported, it's reported below the diagonal. So let's remove it. Now one more thing here. Let's come back here. Now we did see the correlation between just two variables here. Correlation between vision and OP. And it was 0.619 or 0.612. Now, if you've got a correlation between just two variables, how do you report it? So, obviously, this was the correlation between the two variables, vision and organizational performance. And it is positive, which means that the relationship is in positive direction. Now, we can see, obviously, the scatter plot that we did in earlier session as well. I'm going to share the video as well. Now, in this context of the data, the positive correlation confirms that there is a relationship between vision and organizational performance. And this shows that when an organization or the people in the organization understand the vision and they are clearly told or communicated about the company's vision, this can help improve organizational performance. Hence, there is a positive relationship. Obviously, there is no negative sign here as well. Moving on. Now, there are different properties of correlation coefficient. The first thing is that the correlation does not change with the units of measurement. Now, for example, if the unit of measurement change for either of the variables, the correlation coefficient will not change. The correlation coefficient measures the strength of linear relationship between two variables. Now, it ignores any other type of relationship, no matter how strong it is. So, the correlation measures the strength of linear relationship. If there are other relationships like curve linear, it hasn't got anything to do with it. Now, the correlation itself is not enough to determine whether a relationship is linear or not. Now, for this, you will need to have a look at the scatter plot to see if the relationship is linear or not. Now, if the dots that we see in the scatter plots are around that line, then we can say it is a linear relationship. Now, how do we report it? So for just this simple relationship between two variables, a Pearson correlation was calculated and the correlation coefficient was 0.612. So you can mention 0.612 here. And this shows a strong positive relationship between the vision and organizational performance. Now, what if you've got a matrix here? So I've got a matrix here. And let's format it. Right click, format cells, number. Let's go for two decimal points. Let's go for three. Press OK. Now select it. Center. Now copy this and you can paste it here. Now let's bottom border, top border, and then the bottom border here. Now in order to obviously present it, you can write it like this. But in this case, I've done it for items. Let's do it a bit differently. Let's do it for 
composite variables so i've got vision then i've got development and then i've got op and there is no need for the rest of them now i'm going to run it and then do my correlation matrix here and here is my correlation matrix now i'm going to write it into that particular file of correlation matrix.xls okay now it is cannot be created why because it's open so you need to close it let's save it now run it again it works well let's go back now here is your correlation matrix again we do not need this no need for this let's format it right click format cells number okay now center it copy it paste it here now that we have formatted our values or rather the table let's center it so the matrix is presented in table one there was a strong positive correlation between vision and organizational performance and it was 0.6 vision and organizational performance was 619 now we do not have the p-values here so where are your p-values so we are going to look into it but first let's discuss this there was a strong positive correlation between development and op what is it it is 0.631 and no other correlations were found significant now obviously we we've sometimes we have eight ten variables now you cannot describe the relationship between each of the pair so what you need to do is just describe those that are extremely significant in your study and then just mention for the rest of them that they were moderately significant or not significant at all so how do we get the p values for these relationships let's come back here and we are going to use this package here hmisc now if it is not installed you can install it like this and then library call it in and i already have that data frame here in the dat data frame here look at this or this one here because i changed the vector so it is going to give me the p values for this particular matrix so let's obviously the correlation for this matrix or data frame data frame that so let's call it and then run it may take a few seconds now here it is let's first have a look now this is the correlation that we already had here just like we got it previously now i'm interested in the p-values here so here are the p-values all of them are extremely significant you can individually call them like this as well this r core right r core then add a dollar sign and what do you want you want the n you want the r or you want the p just as we get in spss as well so this will give you the correlation coefficient or the p-value and similarly you can use it in here the text describing the correlation or strength of relationship between two variables furthermore what r can give us is it can give us correlation plots as well so i've got my correlation matrix here in this object correlation matrix just run it again let's see yes i've got it here now let's say i want my correlation plots so i'm just going to call this core plot library if it's not installed please you can install it like this and now what i want is i want correlation plot so i'm just going to call this correlation plot function and then where is my correlation matrix it is in core matrix object where is this object here it is here i got it from the output of correlation function here earlier so the output from this correlation function is stored in this object and i'm going to use this object to draw my plots and the type is i want my correlation coefficients or my correlations on the upper side 
Now I want my color of the text to be black. So let's run it. Okay, now it cannot find the correlation plot function. Why? Because I guess I didn't call in the library. So let's call in the library and run it. Now it works fine. So before you use a particular library or a function that is defined in a library, please do call in that library. Now look at this. Obviously this is one here. Now this is slightly lighter. Look at this here around 0.6. This is around point yeah point 0.6 so this is this will give you a, a sort of a heat map now you can change the direction of these circles as well just click the hit and it will become or it will be on the lower side as well and this is obviously showing you the heat map so this will create a heat map of the correlation matrix indicating the strength and direction of the relationship so there is a strong relationship between op obviously and op so this here this one here, this last one. And then look at this one here, development and OP, and it's around 0.6 and over 0.6. So this is how you can use R to retrieve correlation metrics and heat maps as well, and how to report the correlation metrics from R. You can export it as well here, save as image or save as PDF, or you can copy to clipboard, copy plot, and let's say we put it in here in the word document as well further you can crop it as well here i hope the session would have been helpful in understanding how to perform pearson correlation in r thank you very much